morning how's it going out there folks welcome back here to a tuesday 11 18 a.m that's california time here october 14th 2025 already halfway through the month of october crazy all right latest activity here on the globe shows a uh, looks like a 1.6 in the green circle there in southern california uh, let's see what we got across the planet here we'll take a look at the largest magnitude here so far today uh, that, uh, well, at least in the last 24 hours, is going to go to a 5.5 in the Philippines. Now, earlier, short time ago, we had a 5.2 coming into the Chile region. That was a pretty good downgrade because it actually came in a little bit higher than that at a 5.7 magnitude. Uh, so kind of a light to moderate day at the moment. But, of course, uh, anything can happen at any given time. Looking at the data out here for the uh, West Coast, remember those those earthquakes up here the from last night looks like uh, I don't see anything new stirring up out there let's cross the Cascadia subduction zone the southern end here uh, I don't see any newer activity the Bay Area we got one earthquake in the last hour a little 1.2 a uh, handful of small quakes around the Tom's place as well that's just outside the Long Valley super volcano uh, which the uh, caldera sits up here this earthquake activity occurring away from it. Uh, the remainder of the state here, a little clustering going on, it looks like, around the Brawley seismic zone. That uh, mainly from yesterday, although uh, a couple more this morning, it looks like just after midnight or so, a 1.8 and a 1.3. Just kind of a, a typical day out there across Southern California for now. Uh, Newport Inglewood fault, most of that activity from yesterday. It was starting to stir up a little bit in terms of a uh, um, increasing amount of earthquake activity on that fault, which is not a good thing. Obviously, there's many faults out here uh, across the um, West Coast that are well primed. Up at Mount St. Helens, got uh, a couple more earthquakes listed up here on the map. They're actually showing four of them this time. So let's take a look here at the um, trimmer map, and we'll check out that seismograph station there with the uh, Mount Re Mount uh, St. Helens. By the way. 304 epicenters of a slow slip events there from yesterday a little bit down south we'll have to watch this see if it doesn't increase uh, today as well uh, mount st helens and there's a couple of those earthquakes there in the last 24 hours in the orange circles but i just want to take a look here and see what we have for mount st helens there's a there's one about 8 15 or so that did not get reported out here uh, looks like the latest one's going to be a little point one from about 3 30 in the morning 3 30 in the morning see because of this quake uh this pretty much squashed uh the rest of the readings out here the amplitudes here got squashed because to account for this quake here and it looks like there was another one about seven o'clock or so this morning as well um, that's got to be up in the one range or so, maybe slightly higher, just judging on how this, uh, uh, the uh, amplitude readings adjusted for this quake. There's a couple other earthquakes in there in the background as well. If this quake was not on the map, then these would stand out more. Um, but that's, uh, that's definitely a legit earthquake. Not for sure uh, why they are not showing that one. Getting about 8 o'clock in the morning and there's really nothing around that area. Uh, regionally that would um, show up there on the graph like that it just did not want to report that quake I guess up into um, well let's go see what's going on at Rainier because if we got Mount St. Helens stirring up uh, I can almost assume here that Mount Rainier is probably showing a few more quakes as well so let's take a look here real quick bells are off microphones on we're good uh, there's definitely a couple smaller earthquakes out there around Mount Rainier. Nothing big. Uh, just, you know, if you were to really count all these other ones, you know, these really small, tiny, little bitty ones, there's probably close to 100 or so on here. Uh, I'm not going to go and count them all, but it just goes to show you that there's still some earthquake activity occurring. Very, very small microquake activity. Uh, nothing being reported out there, though. Uh, Yellowstone National Park uh, looks like this morning uh, around 3 3 3 in the morning 
had a 1.2 and a couple other smaller quakes out there so let's go take a little look here at the uh, latest Yellowstone seismograph stations which does show some of that earthquake activity around 333 a couple other smaller quakes in there as well nothing big nothing fancy going on here in terms of elevated activity at Yellowstone just occasional uh, smaller quakes with, which looks like they're actually reporting uh, a good portion of them uh, oil fields of Texas still rocking and rolling. Nothing new out there. It's just uh, it's a common daily occurrence. All, uh, also, this one quake up here last night coming into the uh, uh, New York area, it looks like. This shows two miles north northwest of, uh, I think that's Chazi, New York, hopefully. If I slaughtered it, then uh, you feel free to correct me on that. But a little earthquake up there in that zone that uh, is capable of producing a little bit larger quake than a 2.6 uh, in fact that this is a second one it looks like around this area in the last week uh, now this area around these mountain ranges uh, and down south here around Boston uh, they've historically had some uh, larger earthquake activity that's why they're listed on the map here in a hazard zone uh, hundreds of years though have passed since uh, any big earthquake activity up there for some of the regions Uh, Hawaii out here lighting up a little bit. I uh, got one earthquake up there on the eastern side here, Mauna Loa, uh, for a 2.1. Uh, let's go check out the Kilauea Volcano report real quick, see if anything uh, uh, should be getting ready for an eruption. Episode, what is it, 35 coming up? Uh, this update was put out a couple days ago, just talking about uh, fountaining and spattering going on there across Kilauea Volcano but let's just take a look here at the data see what we have uh, we are still going up so no eruption as of yet fairly lengthy duration though in terms of that accumulation there to the uh, to the next eruption we may have may have a couple days though because we're not even at the level seen in the last few eruptions there at Kilauea Volcano so may actually still have a couple days, but this one's going up a little bit slower than uh, than a couple of the other ones, but still on tap to uh, have an eruption here at Kilauea Volcano. Just I believe it's a couple more days before it uh, kicks up, though. Uh, Japan, most of this from yesterday. One more earthquake here at the southern end of the Curl Cam Chatka Trench. For a 4.4 at 63 miles deep there uh, a little activity off the nankai trough as well really nothing stirring up on that subduction zone yet but still watching that starting to fill in a little bit here in the last 24 hours of course got uh, some aftershock sequences there picking up uh, around the philippines quite active here across the java trench uh, looks like there's a little swarm going on here around the um, sumatra area a bunch of twos and threes uh, the Philippines down here, looking at the um, earthquakes that are of decent size. Does show a couple upper fours and a 5.5 from yesterday, but uh, there's a lot more than that, as you can see here on the Earthquake 3D globe. There's quite a bit, some deeper activity being produced out there as well. There's at least two uh, deep quakes here around the region, so that could spell some trouble, maybe for some larger events here soon. New Zealand uh, 3.1 from this morning or late last night I believe and uh, well we've got one earthquake out in the quiet zone a little 4.6 north of Vanuatu but that's about it there there's that five pointer in Chile just it looks like just a normal day out here I don't see anything of any major activity yet uh, over here in Turkey had a four pointer right where that swarm has been occurring uh, nothing else major going on that I see for now. But uh, an uptick here across the area of the Pacific and the uh, Filipino plate. The western side here quite active. Uh, space weather activity, that's uh, starting to stir back up here. We've got a number of C and M flares in the last couple days. This sunspot right here looks like it wants to produce an X flare. It's just consistently uh, throwing out flare activity that's going to be 42 46 here looking quite complex on the complexity model i uh, wish we had the very very latest
but that is still offline there according to the uh, uh, the site that monitors that I, I don't even know if I can get it to load yeah it's not loading so anyway we're left with this one the, but pretty obvious though which sunspots are growing out here this is just one of them the main one uh, also 42 48 out here looks to be uh, showing a little bit of complexity as well uh, we do have a coronal hole uh, that's starting to form it looks like it's a little bit closer here to the center disc if you look on this image here's a coronal hole uh, but if you look on the coronal hole map it looks like it's more over here on the eastern limb but this is uh, it looks like an older image almost by two days uh, so 87 there looks like it is growing in size uh, pretty much center disc there of the sun that may amplify who knows last time we had a coronal hole facing earth here we had all that big activity in the philippines with earthquake activity around that region actually seen a what, seven pointer and a couple other six pointers uh, while that last coronal hole was facing the planet so we'll see what happens uh, this time uh, either way aurora activity uh coming up in a couple nights we do have a number of uh CMEs that were directed at Earth from a couple M flare activity there that was uh, from 4246. So let's go over and um, check out, see what the forecast calls here. I'm going to check this one out here real quick. Oh, that one's the, uh, I got to get rid of that. That's the uh, old page. Right here, let's check out this model. Of course, Earth in the green, Sun in the yellow stereo a here in the red let's go ahead and play this see what we got looks like there's see there's a couple cmes that were blasted off multiple ones it looks like uh, aimed directly at earth that uh, should definitely ramp up things a little bit not talking about anything massive uh, but it will stir up the auroras here pending we get you know the cooperation there with the uh, btbz component of the uh, interplanetary magnetic field but there's a number of uh, CMEs that kicked off there so watch for that uh, down the road here it looks like nothing going on for the auroras right now um, again there's our sunspots 4246 4248 uh, they're both harboring a beta gamma delta magnetic structure and they're uh, both growing so Watch those sunspots. Could see an X flare here soon. Uh, next close approach asteroids here to the planet. Got uh, this one coming in here just under a million miles. That's uh, October 14th. 53 foot. Not a big one. Here's this one's a little bit closer. 271,000 miles, but still relatively safe. Uh, but I don't see anything super close or anything to focus on. Uh, just looking at these five uh, asteroids, they're all relatively um, a decent distance from the planet. Uh, picked up over, an, I almost picked up an inch and a half of rain yesterday. It completely poured down. It was nice, definitely nice. Uh, today, uh, severe weather threat. Looks like there's actually a tornado threat down across Los Angeles today. A little 2% chance here from some of these these uh, thunderstorms that are firing up maybe a little wind and some hail threats out there as well um, that was a decent storm system let me tell you let me see if I can bring up the um, the goes west imagery here real quick because I want to show you guys this is absolutely uh, crazy looking this low pressure system here Gonna go back uh, 60. If it's gonna let me, there we go. Look at that low just spinning out here. Had a lot of moisture spinning up in my neck of the woods here outside of Chico. And of course, here's the convection band. Uh, thunderstorms will fire up there. Looks like there was some lightning offshore, but uh, it's in a fairly decent spot here where uh, I could stir up some uh, thunderstorms and uh, maybe get some rotation going on there uh, where we could see a, a tornado or two down there there's a two percent chance around los angeles as noted uh, but that uh it's gonna scoot east here 
after uh, dealing with Southern California and it just kind of gets taken way up there into Canada. Uh, it does look like we may have some more rain on the forecast in the forecast there for the Pacific Northwest and Northern California. It looks like storm after storm coming in. Look at that one. That's uh, towards uh, almost Halloween time. And what looks like maybe a tropical system down here off the tip of Florida. We'll have to check back on that. Um, but near term, I don't see anything in, in terms of tropical activity there for the Gulf or the uh, Atlantic. Uh, total accumulated precipitation runs here, uh, including these storms down the road. And yeah, it looks like a decent amount. At this point, uh, any early storms uh, is a good thing. Quite muddy out here in my field now. I got uh, quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of rainfall yesterday. All right, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I believe that's about it. Seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet. I uh, really don't see anything showing up on there now. For now, uh, there's one earthquake there in the Philippines. One coming into the Anza station. It looks like. Uh, that's going to be a little 1.5 that just popped up. Uh, the Philippines over there. Looks like maybe that was a 3 or 4. But uh, no big earthquake activity at the moment. Anyway, just be on guard, folks. Stay uh, vigilant, and we'll see you guys out here for the uh, Tuesday night update. Take care.